begin the lecture series with a controversial topic, cannabis versus alcohol. Over to you, Augusta. Okay, I'll first like to start my speech by making a disclaimer. <clears throat> my speech does not condone or propagate the use of either of these. Uh, yeah, just to get it, let you guys know. <sighs> alcohol versus cannabis, the battle of legality. Currently, there are seven countries where alcohol is outlawed, whereas weed is outlawed in just under 150 countries. A staggering 77% of the world finds possession and cultivation of cannabis to be a crime. In this speech, I plan to state, explain, analyze, and allow you to form your own opinion on which should be legalized, you know, and socially acceptable. Firstly, it must be stated that both alcohol and cannabis are drugs. The social acceptability of alcohol makes us sometimes forget that it is a drug. More than 200 diseases and other health issues are caused by alcohol use. And according to the WHO, alcohol consumption is linked to the risk of acquiring serious non-communicable diseases such as liver cirrhosis, several cancers, and cardiovascular diseases. Cannabis similarly has health disadvantages like bronchitis, lower IQ, and a multitude of lung infections. Objectively, the two offer adverse health risks that primarily stem from long-term usage. As both these substances are drugs, they generally provide little to no benefit for the human body, is what I thought before further research. Cannabis offers a few therapeutic uses to those with chronic pain and high levels of stress. It has minor positive effect on the average man like you and me. Alcohol, likewise, has practical uses. According to the National Library of Medicine, alcohol consumption in minuscule to moderate levels has benefits related to cognitive performance, affective expression, and stress levels. Unlike cannabis, it has more positive effects to the everyday man. Seeing as these two stack up pretty similarly in terms of benefits and risks, the next question is, why is one legal and the other isn't? A little history lesson. There is no simple answer as to why weed is illegal and alcohol is. However, there are some reasons like racism and economics that do play a part. The first country to outlaw cannabis was the United Kingdom in 1920, shortly followed by the United States in 1937. See, around 1937, there was a Mexican revolution where there was an influx of Mexi Mexicans to states like Texas and Louisiana. These Mexicans brought with them new cultures, new languages, and a new drug, marijuana. See, the outlawing of marijuana was Americans basically pushing out Americans, basically pushing out Mexicans, much like they did to the African Americans during the crack epidemic. See, this, these foreigners, uh, the condemnation of cannabis was actually the condemnation of Mexicans. The Americans wanted to have any excuse to search, detain, and deport Mexicans. From an economic standpoint, the legalization of cannabis has widespread effects. As Arthur mentioned, weed offers a whole host of positive effects as pain relievers and anti-emetic medications which, if legalized, will rival big pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline, who currently produce those medications. On the other hand, the prohibition of alcohol would mean a huge dent in the economy of most nations. Alcohol is what is known as a demerit good. Demerit goods are heavily taxed to avoid their widespread consumption. But as we know it, alcohol is still massively consumed, which means governments make a ton of money. From every shot of Gilby's, the bottle of Hennessy, the government here is ka -ching. Furthermore, corporation tax the government makes for bottling companies is colossal. It is no wonder that alcohol is a necessity for most economies. To conclude, I hope this speech has been an informative and open conversation about the two drugs, alcohol and cannabis. I have refrained from giving my own opinions about the two. I will allow you to decide which of them should be legal and or socially acceptable, if any of them should be legal at all. Thank you. I thought the Turi Talks was especially beneficial as it practiced my public speaking, uh, an invaluable skill that I will indefinitely use in future. I 
personally prepared for the Turi talks with the, the TLA program, which taught us about planning out a speech, of course, including jokes and attempting to relate to the audience, but also things like statistical figures and how to keep people engaged whilst talking about uh, mundane things like numbers. 